Well, hey again, everybody. This is Steve at the shop. I'm uh, I'm working on a 400 farm all here. I've had a lot of leaking around, uh, all down around the where I put my feet here, around the shifter and all that. So I decided to tear into this old girl and see if I could figure out where all this stinking oil was coming from. I want to go over a few things here. If you've never been into this, it can be kind of a challenge. Uh, I've already got started here and it dawned on me I need to be making a video on this. I've done this before several years ago. And it's primarily the, the, what causes the leaks in these things. There's a there's a million stinking O-rings in this joker. I want to kind of go over this some here. So if you'll bear with me, I'll talk and try to walk you around this. Hold, hold the phone with one hand and point with another. This particular tractor here, uh, I've added on a, an oil reservoir several years ago, which is a free uh, refrigerant tank that I welded a, a, a stud into the bottom. And of course, mounted it. This, this tractor has a, has a loader on it, and I needed more oil capacity for all these big cylinders. So, Necessity being the mother of invention, I came up with this get up. The actual vent, uh, if I can get something to point this out, this is supposed to be a vent right here. Uh, you would normally have a pipe with a cap on it. I did away with that and just put a plug in it because the system will vent right there. It vents all the way back through this tank. Okay, you've got on this particular tractor, it has a, a bank of three. Three valves. Uh, I've got this taken off. These three levers here are taken off. Uh, one controls the, the, the tilt on the bucket, one controls the loader, and then the other one controls the, uh, the fast hitch. Okay, I've got one of the, the valve. This, that's an actual valve right there. I've got it out, and to get that out, you had, I had to remove the handles, which came off the back back here. You have to take the uh, the bolts out of the, the steel, permanent, whatever you want to call them, hydraulic lines there. As you'll see, there's there's a two, oops, there's two O-rings that go here. And you'll see in a minute, there's O-rings for here, here, and here. And corresponding on the back, there's another set of O-rings on the back of this valve. It's hard to see. There's another set of O-rings as well. Uh, all these O-rings, over time, they get compressed to the point uh, they just they won't seal. This particular tractor, I also found, I've already wiped it off, but the oil pressure line was leaking uh, quite a bit. So that was probably half of my uh, half of my oil leak. So if you walk over here with me, bear with me here. We'll walk over here and see. Uh, one of these valves I'm talking about here. Now there's the O-rings out of one valve. Uh, well, that's not exactly true. That's, that's the O-rings out of the end cap. One, two, three, which is these three. And then the other three came out of the actual valve itself. These two were the two on the front plate that I was talking about. You've also got uh, your actuator rod here that goes through the valve itself has got two tiny o-rings in it itself don't overlook them i have in the past they leak this is the part that went to the front those permanent steel lines uh, you can see two o-rings go here now i don't know if you can notice this with a cell phone video here maybe you can and maybe you can see just how flat See how flat that O-ring is? Get a little closer. Over time, that's not going to seal anything. Because they don't go in flat. They go in round and they, then they compress. And as they compress, they seal. Okay, let's move along here. This, uh, this shaft, I apologize for all the movement here, but the shaft is what goes through right there 
This, that shaft will actuate this yoke. This yoke actuates the plunger. The plunger should lock in the up position and then when it maxes out, it's supposed to kick itself back in the neutral, same way in down. You lock it down, when it reaches the end, it's supposed to bump it back out into neutral. If it doesn't do that, you got an internal problem in the valve. I haven't run into that problem yet. Uh, maybe someday I will, but I haven't had to face that yet, so I, I can't give you any guidance on that. But these valves here, if you've ever noticed on the top of these, you've got this little get up here. If you ever wonder, there's an S and a D in the casting. So that's for double action, single action. You can actually take a wrench on that piece right there and flip that valve so it'll be for single acting cylinders or double acting cylinders, whatever your need is. If you take this apart for whatever reason, you notice you got two flat spots on the end of that shaft. They will go accordingly. They will line up into that. That moves your plunger back and forth. It gives you single action or double action. Now, a lot of these old tractors, you'll see this sticking up out of the tin. You'll wonder what it is. It's a selector on your hydraulic valves. Some you'll have one hole, some you'll have two holes, some you won't have any holes at all. It just depends on what option the original, per original purchaser decided he needed at the time. So, what I'm going to have to do now is spend the next hundred years trying to find the right button or the right o-ring. There are some uh, auto shop versions, civilian versions if you will, of these things. They're close, but they're not exactly right. Case IH, I actually bought some of these o-rings from Case IH not too long ago. I'm not sure if they still carry them. I'd be lying if I told you one way or the other. Uh, I would trust them before I would trust Napa. I'll put it to you like that. If you can't, if you don't have a, a Case IH dealer handy, by all means, take these to Napa or O'Reilly's or somewhere and uh, let them check them. If you can, take this plate with you because these go, uh, and they're the same ones that go in the valve, they will fit like that. And you want to be sure you have a snug fit on the outside but you don't want the whole ring to pop up out of the, be pop, popping up out of the groove. And you can see these, hopefully, you can see how flat these are as well. Not the best video in the world, I apologize for that, but you get the idea what I'm talking about here. Uh, you have a lot of wear. This is the, this is a little lever that articulates with your handles. Uh, it actually, moves in and out of this, you get a lot of wear right there and cause you to get a lot of slop in your handles. Uh, at this stage in the game, there's probably nothing you can do about that. Uh, if you're brave enough, you might could take a punch, put a couple punch marks in there, might take up some of the slack out of it, but uh, sometimes you'll get a lot of wear right there through that hole. Let's go back over here in the tractor and we'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about here. Bear with me if you will. If I can get to it. There's the other end of the link. And here is the rod that connects the two. The single focus here. This, these aren't worn too bad actually. I won't have to do anything to these, just stick them right back in. Now when you take this apart, this side, they're 11 6 this is a 5 8 it's one mile long bolt there. This side's 11 16 it's just two nuts holds it in. These stay in the, uh, in the tower there. Okay, just a quick overview. Uh, it is kind of an... Uh, 
I don't want to use the word hard job. It's not necessarily hard. It is kind of intense. If you're in a hurry, don't start it. Do it somewhere or sometime when you've got the time because uh, this job does not go fast. Oh, one more thing. Probably the most critical I should have started with. Take this off the battery. Take your hot uh, hot wire off the, off the battery because you're going to be pulling all this stuff loose. You're going to be in there screwing around with, with wrenches and probably screwdrivers and wedding bands and watches and all that stuff. Take all that off. Uh, you don't want to short anything out and mess up your day even further. So, your public service announcements for the day. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thanks.